If we carefully take care of a few things, then we can lead a good spiritual life. That is to say that as a monk, as a nun, as a monastic, our life can be peaceful, happy, and progressive. First thing is the goal. When we ordain as a monk, as a nun, we should relinquish the desire for worldly goals, worldly material targets we shall relinquish. The desire for material gains, the desire for respect, the desire for name and fame, for attention, all this we shall relinquish. Instead of all this, we should aspire for spiritual goals as suggested by the Buddha. This is mainly the superhuman goals, Uttari Manusa Dhamma, Jhana, Magapala, and Nibbana. So, a lot of suffering, a lot of mental oppression that usually come along with the worldly desires will naturally vanish, perish when we relinquish such worldly goals. And the noble emotions, the noble heart, the noble search that come along with the adoption of spiritual goals as proposed by the Buddhas, all the Buddhas. Jhana, Magapala, Nibbana. We bring with it the nobility the pure aspiration, the pure heart that can give us peace and happiness and progress. So once we become a monk and a nun, we should not care how people regard us, whether people regard us with more respect or less respect, more offerings or less offerings, these are not our concern. These things happen because of our karma only. We should not be troubled by comparing with other, another person, thinking that, oh, he or she. So we should not feel troubled due to the comparison that other people get more respect, other people get more offerings. We should not be troubled. Because for a real spiritual person, material gains are nothing, are shallow, are not something that we should be proud of, 
and not something that we should chase after. So it is okay when we see people we married get a lot of respect and offerings. We just say, Sadhu, this person has a lot of punya, maha punya. That's it. We just say, Sadhu, okay, good. But we don't need to be troubled. We don't need to feel envy and jealous and upset. Because all this happened only to facilitate our journey towards liberation only. As long as we get enough clothing, enough food, proper shelter, a good dwelling place, and medicine, we should be able to meditate. So this is the first thing, because we have relinquished the worldly goals, we have adopted a noble search. Our mind become peaceful, contented, happy, and inclined towards spiritual progress. Then the second thing, our mind should always engage in any thinking, but always relate it with the understanding of cause and effect. This is very important, causes and effects. Very often we find people get upset because things do not happen as he or she wishes. But this is not wise. Because what happens, happens because of karma only. And of course other, other conditions. But karma is a one main important cause. So we should not trouble our mind because of the result. In fact, we should focus our attention on causes on the karma that we are cultivating now, on the dhamma that we are cultivating now, on the mind that we are purifying and cultivating here and now. So, for a spiritual seeker who care about the substantial and meaningful essence in the Dharma practice. We focus on causes and we don't worry about result. Result will come when our causes are complete and mature. So this is the second thing. If we always have causes and effect kind of thinking and understanding, our mind tends to be peaceful accepting whatever that happening around us. Whatever we see, hear, smell, taste and touch and think of, it's okay. We are at peace with it. Pleasant or unpleasant, we are at peace with it and we work on the causes. So our mind becomes peaceful and happy and when we work on the causes, the right Dharma causes, then our life becomes progressive in the Dharma. <clears throat> then the third thing, a spiritual life should always have a natural hope and confidence. Why hope? Because the Buddha has told us what is possible for us. The possibility opened up for us to overcome suffering, to transcend a lowly life in human realm. And the method is clear for us. Because the method is clear, there's great hope in that. 
And we should have confidence as well. What kind of confidence? Some people say, Oh, Bhante, now my practice is not progressing. I'm not having nimitta. I'm not progressing in samatha. Or I'm sick, I'm not well. And that karma is ripening in my life. How can I have confidence? They think they cannot have confidence just because things are not happening in a nice and pleasant way. This is a wrong confidence. This is called for confidence based upon ego, based upon a self. What kind of confidence we want? Confidence based on Dhamma, based on truth, based on the law of cause and effect. If we have the confidence taking its basis in natural law, in Dhamma, in the law of causes and effects, then such confidence cannot be shaken even in the lowest type of our life, even in the lowest period of our life. Even when a lot of unpleasant things, unfortunate things happening to us, still we can have a lot of confidence. Why? Because whether good things are happening or bad things are happening, natural laws is always operating. It never fails to work. The law of karma vipaka, causes and effects, never fail to work. It doesn't stop to work when we are very successful. It doesn't stop to work when we are suffering setbacks in life. So because of this confidence in these natural laws, in this Dhamma, then we know even though now I'm in very difficult time in life, that karma is ripening. It is okay as long as I continue to work out the good causes, my life will change. Surely life will change because bad karma is getting exhausted and new good karma is accumulated every single moment. So we can have this real confidence in life, in this spiritual life. Whether good things happen or bad things happen, whether life becomes fortunate or unfortunate at times, it doesn't matter. The confidence remains because this is a real confidence taking its basis, taking the foundation in Dhamma. That never fails to work. So this is, can give us a kind of peace even in difficult time. Give us the hope even in difficult time. Then, one more thing I want to share with you is gratitude. It is very important to have gratitude. When we have gratitude, we have motivation. Gratitude towards teacher. Gratitude towards our companions in the holy life. That because of their where everyone coming together, we have this condition to practice. Gratitude towards the guardian devas. They are protecting us, protecting our practice. Gratitude towards the devotees, the kapyakaraka, people who work in the kitchen, who create all the conditions, who work hard, for us to meditate, we should have gratitude. If we have a lot of gratitude, every day we feel the motivation to meditate. Every day. Every day we feel, 
every meal we eat, every spoonful we eat, give us strength to meditate. Because we are grateful for every spoonful of food that we take. We are thinking of giving them merits by our own practice, by making our life a fertile soil of marriage making. So with this, we can have a very peaceful life, happy life, and progressive spiritual life. So with that, I hope and I wish all of us cherish, with gratitude, we cherish this opportunity every day, every living moment, we cherish, we use it for good, we don't squander our precious time thinking, talking about irrelevant things, about things which doesn't produce benefit to our life. We don't waste time on that. We focus on what we can do. We don't waste time on what we cannot do. There are a lot of things that we cannot do. People wage war here and there. This is not what we can do. We should not waste energy on that. We should put our time and effort on our causes, our growth, our purity, and hopefully with this, we create a world, uh, a community, which is progressing and purifying in the world. The world may be corrupted, but we are the oasis, the pure ones who faithfully follow the teaching of the Buddha. We correct our mistakes, we change, we transform our thoughts, speech, and action. And move on. And move nearer towards Four Noble Truth, towards liberation. So, with that, we wish all of you good health, peace, happiness, and progress in the Dhamma. Briefly, I'll just briefly explain why this is.